Hey guys, it's Holman Confirmed, giving you some commentary on ZUPL. So yeah, it's finally here. This has been long awaited and has had a lot of hype surrounding it ever since I want to say OMPL. And we're just in the middle of week one, although as far as the game's been played, we are totally on the early side, you know, even still in the first third of the games, I would say. So I'm not really going to do a big week one highlight reel or analysis. I just kind of want to give my thoughts going forward into the Z, into uh, ZUPL and what I'm expecting as far as sets, but not so much as far as outcome. Because even though I'm a big ZU main, and I know a lot of the ZU faces, there are a lot of outsiders that I just don't have the best predictions for. I don't think it'd be fair for me to spread any type of um, misinformation or bias that isn't really rooted too much in how I think these matchups can go. But so far, we've really only seen four games I'm going to be talking about, I want to just say, three of them in Sun and Moon, and I'll talk about the old gen games, I think, I want to say, in, well, we've actually had four in Sun and Moon, I think, right now, it's Wednesday afternoon, but, well, I'll have a whole video on old gens within themselves, because I'm going to be doing somewhat, something similar here, but overall, I really like the draft, I think the teams are pretty cool, there's been a lot of talk on Durza's team being pretty overpowered or that you know the big thing I saw was just how much it lacked ZU mains and everything but it's been a lot of fun it's been making ZU a lot more exciting and interactive with the community and I'm a big fan of it so what I wanted to go into now are just some of the current metagame trends that I've witnessed and what I'm thinking are going to be kind of popular going forward into at the very least week one before I can say uh, going into maybe week two I might have another update to this but this is kind of what I saw preceding the start of ZUPL and one of the more popular mons was Savali Dark. Savali Dark had a huge wave of increase ever since yeah largely because of egg dropping down uh, what was that not even like two months ago so the meta is I want to say it's it's pretty much settled but there's still a lot of new things that are coming out that I think could be really scary and I think teams are going to be abusing so Volley dark is definitely going to be one of the bigger ones it's a it has the kind of the niche role of pursuit trapping bronzor one of the biggest checks and just you know uh, switch-ins for these really offensive psychic types as well as many other Pokemon it could be supported for like if Bronzer was the team's big edge quake switch in as it is for most teams you can see uh, a lot of ground types like Golem and even rock types like Crustle take advantage of that a lot by you know not having to knock off uh, Bronzor and continue to sweep in that end and overall, it's just a really bulky, well-typed Savali. And this is the other set that's kind of, um, I think, kind of popular. This is the Shiftry and Swana check set. Enough speed to speed creep uh, Shiftry, get the you turn off or the stab, or not the stab, but the good covered ice beam. And you take everything from Swana at full. I mean, you even after rocks, I think you can take like a. Z Brave Brave Bird or Z Hurricane. It's not the worst thing ever. You always threaten a uh, Thunderbolt doll. And these the two mons definitely have different types of checks and rolls for your team. But I think that Savali Dark has just been a really good glue mon. Just overall a good Savali pick for what it's worth. Resisting Sucker Punch and Knockoff is really cool. Having that fast defog support as well as just that um, psychic immunity and dark stab that you know isn't as frail as shiftry i think is something that's been really valuable to this metagame and even though bay has been around you know forever in zu 
I, people are really coming around to Specs Bay. Like this thing hits like a truck. And of course there's uh, Z Move Bay or even Offensive Trick Room or Call Mind, Colber. A lot of sets of things people can do with this thing. But the big thing I really like this is that it punishes Marini because Marini is another mod that I was gonna kind of put in here, but Marini's a pretty big staple in the ZU as already, and I don't want to mention too many of the ZU staples besides if I see something really specific. And other than maybe Knock Off or Verhaze, it's kind of the same Marini. So being able to come in and mare, not really worry about Scald or if it recovers or T-Spikes, and then hurting everything with this combination of a Analytic Specs, Psychic, Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, Trick. It is so valuable. And I think in the past, players have been turned off by Bay just because it kind of lacks a little bit of a natural ball. It's a little too slow to speed crap something like Golem. And people just didn't know how to support it. Maybe the meta wasn't as kind as it was, as it was today. And I don't even know if that's necessarily true. I just think that Bay is going to be a really good trend. I think people are really going to want to abuse this mod for all it's worth and power. And in the same vein, there's Egg. Egg's a new mod. There's a lot of uncharted territory, possibilities for sets and variations in sets. Go, They go really deep. I want to show you this thing's um, status move pool as it is for what it's worth. There, <laughs> There is Block, Curse, Grassy Terrain. I mean... <laughs> my gosh i mean it doesn't i know they don't sell like the best sets or anything z nightmare i'm pretty sure raises special attack by two or one <laughs> i don't think that's worth it but wish even oh uh, there's definitely some some move full constrictions but i'm just saying especially with this grass mg set there is a lot of variation and we've already seen a ton of egg sets been used recently so I wouldn't be surprised if someone tries to make Egg a little different or special, but Grassy MZ Leaf Storm is so strong, it is so viable, or the spec set, or the berry set, but I really like this set, I think a lot of players are agreeing this is super powerful. You could even go, or you know, super viable. You could even go Timid here, and Z Sleep Powder would allow you to late game sweep in some in some niche situations right or at the very least you'll be harder to revenge kill for their savali or like savali dark for example if they were sacking a maybe maybe they're sacking a matang right that's already low on half health you go for z sleep powder you two a ko with hp fire so again maybe we won't see the most variation but i wouldn't be surprised if we saw something crazy out of this month and now they have to pick a new switching or they're gonna let their silk dark take uh you know a leaf storm which isn't the best thing even if it is something like this set you know bulky rather than offensive so this kind of has a similar mindset of silk dark and these psychics but another trend i think that's really popular is flying M Z Z mirror move z brave bird swana so this set was thought to be inferior to Rain Dance and even Z Hurricane Roof support for like the longest time. They thought that this is kind of gimmicky, harder to play around, and I, I kind of saw that. I wasn't completely subscribed to that way of thought. I was always a little bit of a supporter of this set, but right now people are in love with it. And that's because it's just so easy to get that Z mirror move plus two to support your team around it, build around it. All these scarfs that could be in the worst situation, like what if Scarf Electrovire goes for Earthquake in, you know, to knock out there, you know, it goes for a faster Earthquake, maybe it's knocking out your Combuskin. Scarf Electrovire has to be locked in this. You get a plus two. I mean, you can kill Electrovire or at the very least threaten him out and set up at the same time and have a plus two Brave Bird, Aqua Jet, Liquidation. It's a great combo. Mirror move also dodging the sucker punch, you know? If they go for sucker punch or if they went for sucker punch, like a shift dream, you come in and spawn a, that sucker punch fails and you get a plus two dark EMZ, which of course isn't gonna be that strong on a shift tree, right? That resisted, but that shift tree's low, that, sh that shift tree's pretty low, you get a kill and you get a plus two. I mean, this is like contrary uh, Servine to an extent, but on, on Swana, right? 
I think we're going to see a lot of out of this set. I think it's a great set. And even if you, even if you kind of knew this and predicted this going into anything, it's so hard to build for and against. There's something like T Punch and Tang, sure, but this is a great modern set, no doubt about it. And then with that, I think there's going to be, as far as more bait sets go, I think we're going to see a decent amount of Electrovire run around. So we've already seen this ran by Czar, and we're going to get into that game at the end of this video. But the idea is, and you know, and actually to be fair, I don't know if he was adamant or modest, but I'll get into that as well. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt, but the idea is that Scarf Electrovire, while it is probably one of the best scarfs in the tier, it is super abusable. I talked about that Swana situation, but there are more, you know. I, I want to show you, if this was Scarf, this would be Volt Switch, right? This would be Volt Switch. Do you see how only one of his attacks does not have a common immunity? Ground and Flying. These are very common types. And if you're locked into that type, you don't have an immunity. And what's your next bet? 75 base power ice type attack. That's not, you know, <laughs> you know, that's not your own coverage move. I mean, I mean that, that is a coverage move. It's not your own stab move. There can be a pretty big problem when it comes to this. So I'm gonna change it back to cross shop. Meanwhile, this set destroys some stalls. It is super powerful, can revenge a lot more. And I wanna say this set, but it's also extra belt, because extra belt is gonna give you that boost on your ice punch, especially for defensive ground types, even defensive Altaria. If you wanna make sure Electrovire is healthy or that you they don't get a defog off, you can go right ahead into that extra belt ice punch and guarantee that kill. After, I, I think you might need some chip or it might be a roll depending on the speed EVs, but it's usually very close to a kill, if not uh, one hit KO with extra belt. On top of just extra belt, wild charge for something like physical defensive um, Marini, which normally actually lives a scarf wild charge. Extra belt, no way. It doesn't even have, it could be Jolly. Jolly extra belt wild charge is one hit KO on Mare. No worries about getting in that scald burn. You know, you're safe. And you that's another thing, you just aren't abusable. And you usually abuse the opponent, thinking them them being conditioned to think that this is choice scarf. So really cool set. I think we're gonna see a lot of it, but at the same time, you can't really roll out choice scarf either. I just want to say that anyone that is watching this going to ZUPL, if one of the few mantras that you should be repeating in your head is that don't assume choice scarf electrovire you know what i mean scout it there's gonna be a lot of good mods that are good at scouting electrovire defensive golem even um even sand slash does a pretty good job but i would say scout it it's gonna be worth it polyrath physically defensive polyrath is a newer mon to to zu as far as um how the meta has been for about six months now when it finally dropped, this was a really fun addition. It does, it, it has a few good checks for what it's worth and it has a kind of a unique role in the circle throw, throw, toxic protect or even equally as effective, at least what other people think, because I don't really like this set at all. Sleep, talk, rest. And I'm not really gonna spend too much time talking about this mon, but I do believe players are gonna try to want to build around this. They're gonna want to say, Okay, how am I going to make this work? What could I do with this? Uh, a lot of players who are still big names in Z or, or, or are outsiders, right? They could be, you know, they could not have played a memorable game in ZU for actual weeks or months from now. So they actually have, you know, zero replays or any games existing with them with Polyrath. And it's a really good mod, too. And that's why I think it's going to be. Probably decently popular. I think we're gonna see a few polyrafts. This is just this is my kind of a week or more prediction of mine But I would not be surprised at all if we saw that the other is Defensive wind cons. I think we're gonna see a decent amount of defensive wind cons and that's curse lehiliki curse muck uh, acid armor call mind What's his name uh, dojin also the Wormadam and dust stock sets. I think players are gonna build around these they're kind of cheeky, but 
they they definitely are viable in their own rights. I think we're going to see some of these, and you should prep for this. So I know I was talking about how good knockoff mirror was. I think that if you, it's it's probably going to be worthwhile to also have haze or to have some sort of phaser, you know, akin to polyrath, right? Maybe. Just because I think defensive win cons. Oh, what am I talking? I didn't even talk about Vigoroth. Vigoroth, I think, is going to be kind of big too. But again, along the lines of defensive win cons are going to be a little bit more popular than maybe what we've been seeing. And then lastly, you might be surprised that I have two Glaceon sets at the end. But these two sets kind of represent a trend in the meta that ever since Obama Snow left and the threat of the the sub play style of semi hail is also gone. I don't think teams are prepping for. I don't think teams are prepping for ice resistances too well, you know. Or they they have ice resistances that are only you know a couple water types here and there, you know, as, as far as options go. Especially offensive team. Offensive teams already have Swana as their water type, but that's not an ice resist. Swana after rocks is gone by Specs Ice Beam, by a Normalium Z Celebrate Ice Beam from Glaceon, right? Or if they ran Bear Tick, or if you just ran like an ICM Z um, Z move on a lot of mons that are viable for what that's worth. I'm thinking that Ice can be a very offensive type in the same way that I think Psychic was a little earlier. I think these two Glaceon sets just kind of incorporate that idea of, of you know this prediction of what I think is going to come but I would not be surprised if we saw some offensive ice types and them upsetting teams but to talk just quickly specifically about these sets nothing really wants to switch into a specs ice beam shadow ball hidden power fighting and blizzard you know the few special walls that there are out there that can take these things blizzard is a 2 a KO delicately after rocks and after a protect. So once Licky Licky recovers 12% from 12% from protect, right, in two turns of leftovers, it's still a guaranteed two a KO. This is doing more than just doing uh, 50 to 63%. Like that is ridiculous damage. I know you got to hit two, so it's a little inaccurate, but you could also just be doing somewhere between like the, the 40 to 50% with Ice Beam, or maybe it's, I think it's gonna be a little bit higher. I think it's like 42 to 53 kind of percent range regardless i think that and also z celebrate glaceon in the back man i think we're going to see some powerful ice types at the end but these are my predictions and i know we're already a few games into week one but i definitely had these in mind even before we got into week one i was thinking this was going to be a trend all right, so this is game one from ZUPL. It's me, Home Confirmed, versus Yari. And going into this game, it was right after the rosters were released, and I've been prepping all weekend, building teams, getting feedback, obviously pra practicing a lot. I had an idea that Pitches or Durza would throw out throw out some stall or some bulkier teams against me just because he knew I liked offense and I figured that that would be a favorable matchup for you know in his eyes which to an extent to me I always thought it was like more of a 50 50 rather than a uh, you know an unwinnable matchup for offensive players in it versus stall and we'll see how this plays out and everything but I built this team I built it really well I love it my only problem with it is that this Electrovire, as we'll see, is Scarf. And Scarf Electrovire, while obviously giving me the team the speed check you would think it needs, it loses a lot of the power. You'll see that these this core is going to be a lot harder to break, and it's really going to be with a few misplays, I would say, that I even have an opportunity to break a lot of this core. Meanwhile, if this was extra belt um, Electric Vire that I talked about earlier, man, after, man, I'll get into this, but it would have done so much for this team. And I've kind of proved that. I've been kind of mitigating this, uh, or litigating this uh, idea by 
all these other games I've been playing these past two days and friendlies and just room tours. I mean, this team's unstoppable. This team is really good once when it has expert belt electrifier. <laughs> and, you know, you live and learn. And I'll talk about some of the plays that I want to take responsibility for, too, that I think also could have been a little bit better. But let's get right into it. I'm looking at this team. I don't see a Toxic Spikes switch in. I know Mare, you know, can take some hits or obviously uh, isn't really threatened by anything immediately. Let's go, let's go Mare, right? Let's just see what happens. Now, the big problem about Mare, of course, is Altaria because Mare can pretty much be walled by Altaria, but Altaria really isn't doing much to Mare either. We're kind of at a stalemate, but I don't want to be the first person to switch out and to have my switch in be punished by a Toxic or even just the flamethrower burn or crit like that could mess my entire day up so i figured it's fair enough let's go for knockoff let's see what that item is on whatever can come in i'm making puka magoo come in let's get rid of that thing's leftovers if it's not z move if it's alteria get rid of its leftovers a rocky helmet again if it's not z move because i'm thinking it's kind of a 50 50 shot that you would use your z move you know i think that's a fair assessment but I think knockoff is the play right away. So he stays in in Hippo. This is great. Do you know how good this is? This would have been, I think, turn one, right after Merrick got the knockoff from Hippo, and if I had Ice Punch Electrovire, I think it would have been over. This is no longer an E-Belt, you know, Ice Punch switch in. Cross Chop for Licky Licky. I already have Toxic Spike Sport from Avalog, which we'll see. But regardless, let's see what he does. I'm thinking Stealth Rocks is free. But he goes for Earthquake. And this was such a weird play because it's like, yeah, you're kind of threatening me. But look at how much I'm getting in these first two turns. Earthquake followed by T-Spike followed by another Earthquake. What were you doing? Were you baiting a crit, you know? It's like, are you just checking damage? Were you expecting the Golem double? I, I don't really see this even after uh, a lot of contemplation about this game. I don't see what it is. T-Spikes is awesome because it means that the only thing that really wants to switch in now is Altaria, which is predictable. You've already given me the necessity that I have to switch out now because my mare about to die, right? So I don't mind switching into something. I'm a little worried about what it could be. You could toxic me here. You could even just phase me out, although I guess without rocks out, rocks up right now, that's not too appropriate. But anyways, okay, yeah, look at maybe if he did have a couple higher rolls. I go buff, and this is kind of a scary play because, again, if he had Toxic, my buff would have been a lot less effective this game, but it's still really effective. Really scary. Avalog and Pukumuku, as you'll see, are still pretty much the freest switch-ins there are. So he's going to go Avalog to get the rapid spin off. He doesn't want to invalidate those rocks, and he actually does a really good job keeping stealth rocks off. That was a good play on his head. A lot of good pressure. But Avalog is lo losing health by the turn. And I go straight for damage because I knew Rapid Spin was obvious. I'm not going to set up a sub when Pukumuku is going to come in free, right? Why would I do that when Head Charge does 55%, man? So this reveal I wasn't Sap Zipper, but, you know, zero grass types on this team anyways. Avalog's in a horrible health range. And I just fire off another one right here. Could have predicted the double, but I wasn't exactly sure what his mindset was. And I kind of want his puke to be in a range where it feels like it's forced to recover or even rest. As we'll see, could that come around? Um, and see how it forces him to go for recover. That's That allowed me shit, you know, allowed shit to come in for free. And I'm thinking, why stop the momentum there? Let's keep it up. Let's do it again. Give me an SD. And this was a play that I'm gonna go. This was a play that I think he's caught a little bit of some flack on this because you'll see later he had a, a designated shift tree switch in with Altaria, right? You'll see this later. What is he going licky licky first? You know, to take the to take the leaf storm. You already have Altaria for that, you know? It's like, this was just weird. This mean this meant Avalog was going down. You had to sack something. Bye-bye, Avalog. All right? So that, I thought, was a pretty bad play in his end. 
And then I've caught a little flack for this too. Alteria, I I mean, if you I this is this is my thought process. Look at Puka Maku. It's not leftovers. It had to be Zemu, right? Plus two knockoff from Alteria with an item? That would have been gone. 50% more than 70? It's dead. But no, it's Zemu. So this was a good bait on his end. I don't know how was I supposed to know that the Puka Maku and Alteria. Keeping Alteria here until you know, not keep not switching into Altaria for Mayor, baiting my shiftry. That was a great play, but look at the sacrifice. Altaria is in a horrible range. It's only going to be at 7% with no leftovers if I get a set up Stealth Rocks, and I want to talk about that later. But anyways, here's the bait. It's Fire MZ. Yeah. Now, Flamethrower probably had a decent enough chance to kill, but I think I also had a decent enough chance to live anyways. So, I mean, that would have meant another dead mod, right? For the most part, anyways. And then this is kind of the middle play where I have to figure out when's my next opportunity to break. So I scared him out with Ice Punch, right? Here comes Licky Licky. Okay, okay. Now I gotta keep buff alive. This is my best bet for a win con. And this is kind of where I, I also saw this. Is that if I did go for a knock on Altaria, I set up Stealth Rocks, right? Altaria is going to be in a low enough range that he, it can no longer switch into Mare, right? I can go for Scald. That's going to kill. It's going to do, like, the minimum 10%. Because it's Fizz Death. It's not Special Death. That's, I, I know Scald is so weak on Mare, but it's going to do enough so it can't freely switch in. If it does switch in on my T-Spikes, it could roost. Yeah, and that's not something that I'm going to do right away. Anyways, I just needed to scare it out. Going to Licky Licky, I'm fine with that. I wish I was cross chop, as you can see. <laughs> Would have been so good. But he goes for Wish. I can't afford to SD here. I have to head charge right away because if he went Altaria, um, if he went Altaria, then you know that this whole chance for keeping a pressure in rocks, this win condition I'm thinking in my head, it's kind of over. At the same time, that was a good play, going for seismic toss there instead of switching to Altaria or whatever. It puts Buffalo in a uh, pretty ugly range. But look at that damage. That means an SD is going to be a kill. So he goes into Pukumuku. And I set up an SD figuring he's going to wish, right? I didn't think he was going to go into Pukumuku this early. I was hoping for a little bit more leftovers recovery. So maybe that was a good play on his own. Anyways, I go right into Golem because this is it. This is my opportunity. I don't care what you do to me. I'm going to set up Stealth Rocks. So he blocks me here without going into maybe, eh, hard to say what else he could have done. He's probably just going to get rid of my Golem because it's a pretty safe play in this end. But now with Stealth Rocks up, and I'm going to get a free switch in, as you're going to see. I mean, gosh, yeah, it's a it's a very good position for me to be in. This is, every, you know, everything's kind of going right. So I'm sacking my Golem to Toxic, as you can see here. He's just dealing with my golem as per, you know, as perspected. I'm gonna go for explosion and I get the crit. Yeah, man. Now this is the the one part of hacks on my end in this game. I'm gonna show you how maybe this didn't matter that much, but it's gonna be enough to scare Pukamiku and keep him down below half. I was in a really good position to win, I would say here. Anyways, I just go straight for the Volt Switch, expecting a switch out. But again, we would have been in a very similar situation. So, it's at this point where I have a ugly 50-50. Do I Scald, predicting Alt, predicting, you know, thinking that it, he was going to go right into Altaria and Defog? Or do I go for Toxic Spikes? But I ended up just choosing Recover, because I forgot that Licky Licky could just kill me right there. <laughs> <laughs> Again, though, I mean, he should be going alt around this time. He should be trying to prevent this off, right? So it's here is when I go Elytra Vire. So if he does go into Altaria, I can at least threaten him out with, um, with Ice Punch. And I can get some of that health down to low range. I can get that health down to low range if I continue to Ice Punch and threaten Mare out. But right now, I'm thinking Electrovire is more of a liability than it is an asset to me. So I'm just going to 
deal with Licky Licky a little more and knock off on Mare is awesome. Again, every time he wishes, I'm going right into Electrovire, not letting him get free HP. You know, I want him to take rocks and I want him to continuously take rocks. Anyways, I get the Z mirror, mirror, uh, mirror move off on his Protect. Protect was good because I'm pretty sure Z mirror seismic toss into, you know, fighting stab plus two. It, that would have been. It wouldn't need to kill, but it would probably put him around here, you know, in the 20% range. It would be 26 after uh, leftovers recovery. But I get the mirror off and I go right into liquidation. I was... I, would, I forgot what I was expecting here. But Hippo is sacked. It's gone, right? So there's a few options for what he wants to go into. Anyways, even if this didn't crit and Pukumuku would... Pukumuku would have been, you know, somewhere closer to here after... Uh, rocks and everything he probably would still want to rest anyways because of the diminishing gains from toxic spike damage I go for another braver get him in the prerequisite damage and it's at this turn where I think he does make another display or misplay because you still have another turn of rest right and brave bird doing 36% don't get me wrong, a liquidation into a Brave Bird probably wouldn't have killed, right? But I'm worried I'm taking a lot, a little bit too much recoil damage here. And I also thought the Licky Licky play is pretty obvious. I mean, I don't know about you, I just thought that was obvious. So I got the liquidation, I got the defense drop, that doesn't matter because of um, poison and uh, what is it called? Sandstorm. So I get to preserve my health and I get a free. I get some free damage on Dust Clops. I go for Brave Bird because I want to force him to attack and be in a very, very low range. And I think this is kind of a misplay right here because going buff one probably wasn't my best bet. I probably could have preserved it. Dust Clops had to rest this turn. But I was also hoping Earthquake maybe could have killed. Did I source dance? <laughs> let, me, let me just see. One second. Yeah, I did source dance. Okay. I thought maybe this was a free setup because I knew he had to recover. But I think if I went Mare here and just pressured the knockoffs and the scalds, it would have prevented Altaria to come in. It would have prevented Altaria coming in. And then I could have gone buff on a turn maybe when he's sleeping or lower health and then SD'd or sub. Still dangerous 50-50. But the game was still salvageable here, right? There was a very good chance with Sleep Talk rolls. There was a 66% chance, Sleep Talk rolls, that he gets Toxic for Rest, right? Which fails, you know? This is in my favor for him to basically have two turns of sleep that do nothing. At, that, at which point, I would have recovered enough HP to live another Seismic Toss, you know? And it totally would have been over at that point. But anyways, he gets the seismic into toxic, both from sleep talk, and that's the game. Not gonna bore you with the rest. I'm done for. Mayor just can't really do anything against dust cloud. Pressure means my PP gets stalled out, and that's the game. So I know that was kind of a long analysis, but I just kind of wanted to go deep into my thought and thought process. Really wishing I went mayor. Would have been scary though if in the wrong situation Altaria did come in and recover but at the same time Altaria really couldn't hurt me and Pukamaku was in range after Stealth Rocks to go down to head charge just a single head charge so all I needed to do was be alive for Pukamaku and that thing was going down you know with uh, with buff line so bit of a bummer but a lot you know lesson learned I really liked the game it was a lot of fun playing it and the other game I wanted to talk about was Zars versus Fruit Shop. So this is not my team or my matchup. So I was in the audience for this, for the most of it at least. And I really love this game. So Fruits over here bringing the, you know, it's like a balance with, with what I thought was going to be a lot more of an offensive egg. You see it's just more of a... A slower, bulkier balance. I mean, the egg is still offensive in its own right, and we'll get into that. I was just expecting 
a little something different. While Czar was kind of bringing his a little bit more of a traditional Czar set, or at the very least, Bullaby. And this is where I think Fruits already failed to do the proper amount of research or building because, I mean, Czar is a ZU room voice, you know? I know the guy, I talk to the guy all the time. And he's really vocal about how much he likes Volibee. He thinks it's good. He's brought it up in VR rankings a lot, right? I know the guy likes it. So if you know he likes, he has an affinity towards Volibee, right? You know one of the big things he's promoting is that it can check Executor really well. Why are you bringing Executor? <laughs> you know, even if you're doing the over prediction here, thinking that, oh, well, Volibee is obvious, of course not, so I'll bring Executor because he won't bring it. You're just better off bringing another, mod, you know, a different mod, <laughs> you know? Just forget about it. There's enough fish in the sea just to choose something completely unrelated, but you brought eggs. So that's what I thought, at least for me, knowing Czar, I'm not going to bring egg. I'm not going to advise my team to bring <laughs> to bring egg. So, and I, again, I don't even think that's me throwing Czar under the bus or anything. Zar played great this game, and I, it's obvious that he likes Volibee. You know, what I'm saying right here isn't something that anyone with the, you know, lick of ZU research could find out. So, Leafeon is the other one that I think has a really good matchup on his team. So, and like, what could this Savali be, you know? Savali Dragon kind of makes sense. Savali Poison you can rule out, and you could probably rule out Savali Fire too, but... The point is, it's likely going to be Savali Dark or Savali Fighting. Even it's definitely not another month, another month that's worthwhile. So Leafeon kind of does just come in for free. Leafeon goes for knockoff, probably expecting, probably expecting the Executor. Maybe thinking that Fruits would imagine Leafeon to be Choice Band, you know, or even just a bulkier mon like Licky Licky Dragon Tail. You know, because if the thing was SD, he was in a bad situation. So Fruits goes for Poison Jab. I see the mentality behind that. And that's a weird, weird little bait move there on Sandslash. We don't see that often. Thankfully, it doesn't crit or poison. Decent enough chance one of those, one of the two, those two happen. But anyways, there's Savali Dark. Here it is. And again, you, you see that he's really lacking a faster grass dark kind of or, or leaf blade knockoff resistance he was kind of hoping this team works in the context that yeah i could check shiftry but leafeon <laughs> mm. leafeon's definitely easy to forget team building wise i don't think of it all the time because i don't think it's that great of a mod but we see it here performing really well he gets the crit of course that would have only done 40 percent failed to a kale but right now He's in a really bad range, and every turn that Leafeon stays threatening, it's going to get a little bit of health back, you know? That's pretty nice. But he goes Golem. Golem is revealed to be defensive Golem from the leftovers. After the U-turn into a Sand Slash, this was pretty free. I didn't think that going for Stealth Rocks was maybe the best play, but at the same time, considering U-turn was obvious, you couldn't really give up. You couldn't really give too much for Golem or for it to do anything back. Unless if it was toxic, but even then, Mare could have been a possibility. Or just firing off an Earthquake. Overall, I think Toxic could have been the good play, so that thing didn't get pivoted into Egg, AKA, you know, the main reason. One of the main reasons why you have, you turn on Silk Dark, you know? So you can break a Golem sturdy, go into Egg, resist the Earthquake, kill it after it, um, after, he sets up Stealth Rocks or even Toxic. It's still a good advantage. But he goes right back into Leafeon. So kind of a safe play because you, you could expect Rapid Spin. You could kind of respect, or expect Stealth Rocks just because guaranteed no other um, Rocker on his team. And Zar just keeps the momentum up. Goes right for Leaf Blade. So I think after seeing that Poison Jeb damage, uh, Zar assumed that 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 uh, Sand Slash was a little bit faster, a little bit more offensive. Probably didn't have enough defensive, have, didn't have enough defensive investment to take a Leaf Blade. Great play. And this is weird. So I, I thought this was kind of weird, but Fruits went ahead and risked the speed tie. You know, the base 
a 95 speed tie for a multi-attack and that's it like this is Letheon you know at this 37 you know <laughs> Letheon's got a base 110 defense not even uninvested that's not the it's nothing to scoff at so that was weird because you almost just lost that mod entirely and started going for defog anyways best um e-vire switch and there is golem gets the leftovers recovery golem goes out so assuming that's scarf because it didn't try to do anything else but at the same time e-belt earthquake didn't kill yet so you can't really predict the most out of that goes for stone edge and defensive golem i like that i like the stone edge and defensive golem just probably for damage baiting the wish baiting the wish protect if uh if he did go if he did go licky licky but also egg it's a it's a clear match out for the rest of his team stone edge is perfect now that same slash is gone it's actually kind of the problem the lack of rock resistances imagine shell smash russell on this against this team look at how much shell smash z edge russell does against this team once once his slash is gone you know and even then if that slash isn't that defensive that's a problem but then we see the curse licky licky Wow, so this I was not surprising at all and curse Licky Licky at this point Probably has a good chance to sweep if Vullaby isn't whirlwind. Pretty sure Vullaby can run whirlwind Czar has zero uh, return uh, Yeah, zero normal resist so nothing can really take a return once this thing's full and no good special wall breakers or Swords and sweepers besides Letheon, but even then you have to Swords Dance while this thing continues to curse. Probably a losing battle. You know, get the crit, if you're lucky, get another one. You know, not worth it. But Zar had the fight EMZ! Man, this set, that, this set was great. Yeah, I love that. That was great. So, that was, I think, a roll, if not adamant. At plus one, like he, like he just took it to 2 HP. That was a roll. Still in his favor, but a roll nonetheless. Regardless, Licky Licky was gone. That was a great play. And Fuddy MZ kind of fits on this team if Rapid Ash, you know, is Scar or uh, Choice Band even. I've always been a proponent for either Fuddy MZ or even ICMZ on my E-Belt uh, E-Vires if I didn't have a better Z-Move user. Although I'm just kind of surprised because I think Leafeon could also be a pretty good Z-Move user if he didn't want it on Rapid Ash. Although Leftovers did prove to be kind of useful. Anyway, switching right out to Volibee, because of course, it's Czar, and Fruits reveals that the set is this kind of this mixed offensive sub-seed set. It's a little weird. Anyways, Volibee gets the free U-turn off of Mare, goes right into Leafeon. Kind of, uh, kind of iffy in my book, just because Earthquake, I thought, was free from Evire, followed by Ice Punch, but that probably didn't kill Executor, you know, because it's not extra belt, it's like Z move, and Leafeon does get the free knockoff anyway, so that's actually, that's actually not the worst play, but it does jeopardize Leafeon for, um, does jeopardize Leafeon for Scaldburn. Anyways, knockoff was going to get rid of this thing's scarf, which would have been really helpful. This thing's, uh, this thing's berry, and of course this thing's a violet, so very free play. So again, Leafeon's a great great example but just risky you know a little bit more risky leaf blade into knockoff or knockoff into leaf blade like i said did some pretty good damage still no scald burn so leaf Yon is going to be able to get away with the kill Let's see if he goes for what i think he does now he goes for leaf blade so i'm pretty sure knockoff was just as strong after a violate so he could have risked that same roll to get rid of this thing's um, choice card would have done less damage but it also would have been between the 50 50 for the leaf blade just another option how that could have went here comes the ice punch from electrovire pretty safe to assume there that this is definitely um choice scarf electrovire from the damage and how he chose to go for that move rather than others and it's not looking good for Fruits. <laughs> so Czar happily sacks, sacks um, Golem from the Ice Punch and is planning to revenge with Rapid Ash now that his Mare, Fruits' Mare, is a Violet less. You can't do 
anything because you're locked into because you are locked in to the ice punch against the fire type again kind of a problem with, it's a problem with scarf in general but the meta definitely revolved around abusing uh, scarf electrovirus so that's a problem in its own right so again this is like a weird mix citrus berry substitute harvest set I've never really seen sub fleece seed set I've never necessarily seen it too much in a serious competitive setting, but sorry, happily just gonna star out or stall out this uh, executor for what it's worth. It's the U-turn off finally. The slow U-turn that's actually really important, so it doesn't get stalled out for a few other things. Anyways, what I'm assuming was Choice Band and Afro Dash gets the kill, and. Obviously, Choice Scarf Electrovirus just doesn't have enough to sweep the remaining five mobs. Not to, talk, not to mention a muck that didn't even come in. Sard played great this game. I love to see it. That was awesome. I love Fruits. I think Fruits is maybe even like top five best CU players there are, from at least what I've seen out of Fruits. But this game, I think that he could have done a little bit better for preparing for the game as well as making plays. Even his team composition, I think, has some problems. I talked about how I talked about how he really only has um, Sand Slash to take the. What was I talking about? Oh wait, no, I don't even. Sand Slash was for something. I, I'm losing my mind. But there's there are some problems with his team composition. He has one singular Ice Resist in there. You know, that I mean, hey. You only have one ice resist on Zara too, with with um, three ice weaknesses. It's kind of going back to this Glacian prediction. What the heck did this Mon do for his team? Uh, I forgot. It's like it's only checked to something. Uh, mm, it's okay. Like if had Zara brought another more offensive mod, I forgot what it was. A little more dangerous still. Great games kind of indicative of my predictions but also my predictions were a little bit influenced by this game as well as is all the games the last thing I want to talk about was the Zaya versus Thursday game so this was the hype game at least this was probably the the most anticipated game that I wanted to watch and I helped with uh, Zaya when it came to team building and speculating with his team it was largely his input and a lot of his ideas totally but here he is up against Durza over here Durza bringing kind of a weird team revolving around what looks to be a U-turn core into an offensive bay at least on you know both turn core and defensive bay uh, by the looks of it you know got some good defensive pivots and Bronzer over here, even Savali, we don't know what it is, but I'm, we're kind of guessing maybe it's a little bit defensive. It's safe to assume that this Savali could be Savali Water or even Fighting because he lacks a really good knockoff resistance. Savali Fighting, and of course, Dark again, another Savali that could totally uh, fit the ticket here. I would say Fighting or Dark over most, but we'll see what this ends up being. Zaya leads or Seiko. Kind of because it has a decent enough matchup against Bronzor is what I'm guessing. Against, <laughs> it's funny, it's like they had uh, both teams' mascots. Or at least Zaya's mascot as Kamala. But we see the, uh, we see this lead. And I kind of talked about this earlier. It's hard to make a play because this mod has so many sets. It's hard to see what it is. But what Zaya ends up doing is you turning out. And I want to say this. Do you see the damage? 19 damage from what is a specially offensive Orisiko, right? This is where you should have known this thing is missing HP investment. You know what I mean? This is where you gotta know, like, whoa, this thing's offensive. It's not Scarf, because, you know, I'm faster. But why did that do a whole almost 20%, you know, almost one fifth of Kamala's health? So he goes into She, uh, thinking that it could take it. But here comes the choice banded oh, return, man, or frustration, whatever. Man, that did a lot. What what would normally be a mon that could leech seed 
Spore takes so much away from his team is in a really tough position. Still a decent position, like one strength sap, it's up to full right away, right? But it's scary. So what I thought would could have been a better play, and this is of course in hindsight, would have been his Savali, which we'll get into. But he goes running to Matang, because that's you know safe enough. There is a fires off returns, because why not get some chip on Matang or anything anyways? Don't need to over predict. So he goes into Bright Vibravia, admittedly a good switch into Matang and a decent amount of these less offensive Stealth Rock users, and even Golem can be pretty good switch in for and getting off Defogs. Anticipating the Defog, we see him, or Zaya going right into Eradicate to get that free turn of Flame Orb, get that Guts boost right away, not have to worry about having a 70 base power facade coming from, you know, like whatever, the base 85 attack stat that Eradicate has before Guts. But actually, the U-turn came out. Kind of a scarier play. So we don't know what this Electrovire is. I think it could be anything. And Zaya probably predicting Scarf. Definitely predicting Scarf, because otherwise, um, you know, why else would he switch into, uh, what's this called, Electrovire right away, if it, if it wasn't? Because then, even though, even though he switched right into um, Eradicate, which was faster, you know, from this play. I don't think it's outside of their, there's his territory, and you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's outside his their, um, jurisdiction to bait the scarf, you know, for Zaya to be afraid of the scarf and him to switch out and him to go either, you know, do a double or for him to go right for the earthquake, predicting maybe Electrovire, it's also just kind of safe. And then if it was Expert Belt, Earthquake into Ice Punch, would demolish she you know it's gone right could hurt a lot of different savali forms but what we do end up seeing seeing is predicting the scarf correctly which is really good wild chart did 20 percent so that is kind of a i'm pretty sure that's a relatively high roll so and getting two of these in a row does mean the end for she so if it got one low roll out of those she could have been right up to completely full health um, Electrovire could have had some pretty decent chip damage. I mean, down to 60%, you know, 65% after after another uh, Stealth Rock switch, and that's pretty good for dealing with um, Scarf Fire. Anyways, out comes Matang. I'm not sure why it went Matang. Uh, probably because Wild Charge was obvious, but at the same time, you know, I guess it's not. You can't. You couldn't absolutely rule out. Evelt Vire. It's possible, but hmm, I don't know. I don't know why he didn't go Vire instead of his own, uh, instead of Zaya's own Electro Vire. Maybe because I'm thinking now, because uh, this thing existing, it's very hard to be locked into a move, and then you can also be revenged very easily, especially because your physical wall is now gone. But he pulls the double. Anyways, so we're fine in that regard. Great play, turn seven. I talked about this earlier. This was a great play. And that Vibravia did nothing. Apparently, it was negative attack investment. So that's on Durza. I mean, that's just, that's just on him. But regardless, Rad is live, still very threatening. This goes down, and it's still anyone's game. At this point, still anyone's game, but she would have been really nice to have. Here comes this Electrifier again. Should be solidified now that this thing is Scarf, but what is it going to go for? Mm. A lot of things could be safe, but we go right into Savali Poison. And yeah, this thing's going down to Earthquake, you know. <laughs> so Savali Poison could have done a lot of good things against his opponent's team. Like if, if Durza did bring Marini for Toxic Spikes, if um, Durza had more offensive fightings or fairy types, Savali Poison could be really useful. Just an all, over -round, or all around good pivot. And here we see Savali Dragon, which is odd because, again, look at the ice. <laughs> look at the lack of ice uh, switch-ins. Look at the lack of ice switch-in. It's one mon and it's weak to, it is one mon and it is weak to Shadow Ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, again, I, I think there are people are lacking ice switch-ins left and right. But the 
the big thing about this is that uh, we don't know what his investment is. If this thing's it's, it's shift check offensively, you know, we can we can assume a few things. But he goes Orsico right away, and I think he goes he pulls the double in the Matang just to kind of scout the Draco Meteor because a Draco Meteor, you know, a minus two uh, Savali Dragon is gonna be a lot easier to deal with, right? Or even if he goes for Defog, he could spam Stealth Rocks if he really wanted to. But here comes T-Ball, so you already know that this thing is pretty offensive if it has room for T-Ball and Draco Meteor. Possibly U-Turn and, deep, and a, a Defog, right? Flamethrower, the big one too. So there he is, he scouts Flamethrower. And, you know, I don't even understand. <laughs> you know, seeing this game, I didn't even understand what set this is. But Zaya kind of just has to make a sack, or in this case, it's going to be a speed tie. So speed tie if, if it was a, a if the Savali poison lived. But there it goes down to Draco Meteor. This is what Zaya wanted to have Matang up against, uh, you know, minus two Savali Dragon. So here comes the U-turn. That was a full set. Look at this set. I don't think I've ever seen thunderbolt on draco and flamethrower maybe that's a little bit more standard but maybe i'm thinking it's toxic but yeah that is just full out offensive savali dragon and then he goes into um bronzer gets the full para it wasn't really doing much against you know bronzer anyways matang was so there, there's nothing of too much craziness lost there but here comes orsico or see what kind of is a free fire type attack or hurricane. You know, this could be specs too. If this was specs, it would be much harder to make a play here. But 39 into a Z hurricane is going to kill Bay. Bay did nothing this game. But I'm guessing was maybe possibly physical defensive Bay. I don't know. And you know what I really don't get is why, oops, why leftovers? Why leftovers over Colbert? Over a Z move, do we even see Z move user on his side? I thought Zaya, I thought um, I thought leftover just kind of whack, but maybe there's a reason. <laughs> Anyways, here comes Savali Dragon outspeeding Orsico. It's um sad three one three speed tier going down to T Balt. Kind of a risky play, but with Zaya's own scarf. Electrovire. He didn't want to be locked in the ice punch because, you know, Bronzer existed. It, Bronzer got off a free side wave, which at this point is doing some, some big damage to the entire team. And the game's kind of over. So even though the crit Thunderbolt probably, I don't know if it mattered or not. I'm going to say it probably didn't. But even if it did, like, I mean, he, he had a little too much. I mean, Scarf Calm. I mean, what if this does Sucker Punch, you know? Then I'm just really over. And what were you going to lock yourself into to let Z or, uh, Komala go right for the knockoff? So right now, it's it's just the end of the game. They're just trading off tax and whatnot. The flamethrower on Scarf Electrovire is pretty cool. You don't see that too often. It's usually inferior, but I guess on this team, I could see it. Anyways, his own Scarf Electrovire just gets to throw off an Earthquake. And it's over. Not nothing really you could have done with that. Um, actually, I don't know if this was Scarf or Expert Vault, but it didn't really matter at that point of the game. It's hard to say where it was going to come in and do some work. I'm thinking it's Scarf for speed control, but again, during the CUPL, I wouldn't predict it. So that was a long commentary. I don't know how long this video will be after the edits. Uh, I'll definitely leave timestamps down below so you could switch between battles. Um, if you have something that's maybe more interesting than another that you want my opinion on. Uh, but th that's pretty much it. I'm really looking forward to ZUPL. <laughs> yeah, I sure sound like it, don't I? <laughs> but <laughs> I liked it a lot. Uh, I, I would like to have a little more people on this, just talking, giving our thoughts, giving some analysis, opinions, predictions, um, you know, just some friendly conversation, especially with my own team or even other teams would be really cool. I think that's better fit though for after week one, just to talk about it all. But yeah, this was Hoenn Confirms. 
opinions and thoughts on the UPL. Thanks for watching.